origami and math. Let's put the two together. For the best ideas in arts integration and SEAL, social emotional artistic learning, subscribe to the Inspired Classrooms channel and hit the bell to be notified when we drop a new video. I'm Elizabeth Peterson. Let's get started. Have you considered all the wonderful possibilities of the art form of origami? This right here is just full of so many math concepts. And how about this amazing shape, three-dimensional shape? There's so many math applications to origami, and these were made by my friend Stacy Greenland, who was the one who showed us about flex tangles in this video. You'll definitely want to check that out. But right now, I have a special, special treat. Barbara Pearl, who is a world-renowned educator and author, is also the founder of Math in Motion. You'll definitely want to check out that website. And in today's video, I'm so happy to be able to invite her in, where she's going to talk a lot about how math and origami are so related and give us a wonderful technique, a wonderful methodology of how to integrate math, math vocabulary, into some origami folding. She calls it see it, say it, write it, and does a lot with the concept of mind foldness. All you need to join us in making this mystery model is a regular sized piece of paper, blank, new, lined, old, recycled, any kind of piece of paper you want, and a pencil. Oh, and don't forget your hands for doing some folding. As I developed the program and the methodology, I was invited to speak at different conferences, including NCTM, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Mm -hmm. And uh, after speaking at several conferences, um, I developed Math in Motion, where I was invited to do staff development training, teacher, family, student workshops. Probably the highlight of my career is being invited to Japan and speaking to the Ministry of Education and I was invited to travel throughout China and Japan. Oh, wow. And Elizabeth, when I was training teachers, um, I encouraged them to explore more origami. And at the time, there were books in the library, but they assumed you had a Japanese grandmother or a degree in engineering. So <laughs> when I wrote my first book, um, I decided to write it in Mother Goose terms just so that when teachers picked it up, they could use it immediately and they could integrate it into their classroom. And that's what Math in Motion is. And I, when I gave it to NCTM, that's the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, to review, I thought it was best for K-6. But they sent it back and stamped K-8 because so many of our students suffer from math anxiety mm -hmm. and from what I call the three Fs, fear, frustration, and failure. And, you know, the arts is such a powerful teaching tool mm -hmm. that when children are doing origami, they're engaged in this learning process. Yes, and, and that's one of the benefits of the arts in general. And so I think that when teachers and parents start to really understand that the arts aren't just... Uh, you know, visual art, music, drama, and dance, but it really does expand to so many different things, origami being one of them. And so I love that you bring the art of origami to, not just to us um, for the fun of it, but as an integrating tool. And, you know, it's not just about math. I know you talk a lot about um, SEL, social emotional learning. And so can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the social emotional benefits? Like, I love your mindfulness. Um, I, I can see this uh, being so useful with growth mindset. So can you tell us a little bit about that? I, I was going to demonstrate that when we do um, the uh, fold tonight. Um, oh, fantastic. Also, um, as steam is rising in education, I always say origami is increasing. I don't know if you can put a pun in there. Yeah. And 
So when students have created a model, I find it develops their self-esteem and confidence. And when they yeah. feel successful, then they're more apt or inclined to transfer that to other areas of learning. And when we do the folding tonight, I'll also incorporate the mindfulness and the SEL component. Usually I, I invite students to use colored markers, but I thought I'm just going to use a dark one because I think that will give um, you a better idea of seeing it visually. But I encourage children to use different colors. Great, that's kind of fun. And I start with what I call an inquiry-based learning model. It's also a model they use in science where we explore and investigate the patterns and the creases on the paper. And I start out by first asking students, what do they see? It's a good idea, and I did this in the virtual retreat this um, summer. Yeah. I have a list of questions that you may want to ask your students as they're folding. Oh, nice. To see what you would like to focus on. And each time you teach the model, you can build on it. You can also use it to, to reinforce new vocabulary or assess what students already know. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm going to start by asking, what shape are we starting with? All right, and I think we've got it. It's a rectangle. And then um, younger students who are not uh, writing yet can trace the paper rectangle with their finger. Students who are writing can write it on their paper canvas. Let's write the word rectangle anywhere you want. Got it. And if you're working with students uh, remotely, and you have access to a whiteboard, you can write it down so they can copy it and see it. And what do you know about a rectangle? How many sides does it have? Four sides. Four, yep. So younger children, again, you can adapt and modify each model to the grade level you're working with. So I have younger children trace the sides with their finger and they can count them out loud. One, two, three, and four. They might even write the numbers on them. So starting mm -hmm. here, one, one, two, three, and four. Older children can write the word four anywhere you want on your paper canvas. Excellent. Now, two of the sides we know this we observe are long and two are short. And we have a word to describe the long side of the paper. Length. Good. So. Mm -hmm. When we identify a part of the paper, I have the students label it. So let's write length along the long side of the paper. Got it. Write it on both sides. And the short sides of the paper, if you rotate it, we call that the... The width. Width, yep. So I'm going to write the word width. And again, I would take my time with this and do it slowly. Yeah of the demonstration I'm going through it a little faster but so that you get an idea of the methodology Excellent. younger children yeah even like to stand up and make the shape of a rectangle with their bodies you know if your group of them could do that if you're in a classroom um, mm -hmm. or even maybe with their pencils or rulers now, another way to describe a shape that has four sides, it begins with the letter Q. I know Anyone that know one well. That would be quadrilateral. <laughs> quadrilateral. And again, you're writing these vocabulary concepts and words on a board so they can copy it with you. And quad means four in Latin, and lateral means side. So even before we start to fold, we're exploring some basic math concepts and vocabulary. Again, reinforcing it or assessing what your students know and what they need to learn. We start to look around the room and explore different quadrilaterals. And if you look in your room at home or in the classroom, they're everywhere. Mm, they they really are. <laughs> do you see them in your room, Elizabeth? I do, do. absolutely. In and the frames. Know, so and the windows, the window panes, my desktop, my computer screen. There's just uh, tons of quadrilaterals everywhere. I caught the invasion of the quadrilaterals. <laughs> and so you see, the more fun you can make students and engage them in the learning process, the more inclined they are to learn. 
And I learned very early as a parent and a teacher, mm -hmm. it's not so much what we teach, but how we teach it. Yes. And you know, the all of these words and words I'm sure we're going to get to as well are all words that I have taught my own third and fourth grade students over and over and over again. But how much more engaging this is and the actual anticipation <laughs> of well, what's next? When are we going to fold? And when? what is this going to turn out into? So it's very, um, it's exciting. And I often say, um, as a teacher, I wanted to get all my students involved in the learning process. And you know, some students can be looking right at you and not hear a word you're saying. But mm -hmm. with Oregon, each student is engaged and I have immediate assessment uh, from what they're doing. Yes, this is true. Okay, we're ready for the next part. So um, I might even take it a step further depending on what grade level you're working with and ask students, can you think of other quadrilaterals besides a rectangle? To qualify, it has to have four sides. Can you think of other quadrilaterals? Oh yes, square. And you might want to write them down on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, trapezoid. Trapezoid. Parallelogram. Telegram. So you can make a list of those and again introduce those to students. This is an opportunity um, to challenge their imagination and nurture their creativity as they're thinking about these mm -hmm. ideas. So excellent. After exploring it, I even might explore the texture of the paper if you're using, you know, depends on the material you're using and even the color expand on the idea. Mm -hmm. So you get the general sense of this methodology. I call it a see it, say it, write it program. Yeah. So we're going to start with the first step. And I'm going to tell you um, a story that goes with this. This is a story about the brothers Long, we call it the length, and the brothers Short. And one day the brothers Long received a long invitation to the inspired classroom. Mm -hmm. So let's take our paper canvas and fold it lengthwise in half. Okay. And when we fold in half, I encourage students to crease at least three times. The secret is in the crease. <laughs> and that's all that holds the paper model together. So encourage them to crease at least three times. Okay. And in origami language, Elizabeth, this is called a book fold. Whenever you fold a square a rectangle in half, because it opens like a like a book. Mm -hmm. so if you want to make a little note of that somewhere, you can refer to this step as book book. Great. So when the brothers long received the invitation, they opened it up. So unfold that step. Mm -hmm. And they read the invitation and it said be inside. But before we do that, <laughs> after we open the paper, there'll be a new discovery. So there's lots of explorations and opportunities to investigate. What did that first fold create? You see a line down the center? <coughs> yes, absolutely. <coughs> and if you have a ruler, I would encourage students or teachers to, to trace that and draw the line. Yes. A little thicker so everyone can see it. <laughs> And in mathematics, we have a term for that. Because if you look at it, you notice that it divided the paper into two equal parts. Can you see that? Yes. And we call that the line of? Symmetry. Symmetry. So as we identify that part, let's also label it. Again, writing it on a whiteboard or a surface so they can copy it. Right. And you might ask them, what does a line of symmetry do? And I know teachers that have explored symmetry that you can spend a couple days just exploring it in the classroom and outside or at home. Mm, definitely. Another concept I want to introduce when we're talking about the line of symmetry is what direction is it going? Younger children might just say up and down, which mm -hmm. is a good answer. Mm -hmm. but also an opportunity to teach them vertical. So let's just put that there. Okay. Vertical. That's the vertical line is symmetry. 
again, we might use the classroom or our home to discover other vertical lines mm -hmm. in the environment, in our space. Now, two more concepts. Um, because it divided the paper into two parts, I'm going to label one side one and the other side two. Okay. One, one spot. And if you're working with students a little older and introducing fractions, we can write one half on each side of the paper. And so this would give you an opportunity to talk about the parts of a fraction, a numerator, a denominator. Mm -hmm. So you have to pick and choose depending on the grade level you're working with. Of course, yeah. So now when they read their invitation, it said meet in the middle of the classroom. So they did. <laughs> we're going to take the long sides and fold them precisely against that vertical line of symmetry. Use the vocabulary to reinforce as you're teaching. That concept. Right. A lot of symmetry in origami. So if you do it on one side, you do it on the other. You're going to fold both sides vertically in the symmetry. Increase at least three times. If you're holding it this way, you could talk about the horizontal line of symmetry. Right. Now, in origami language, I'm just going to teach you, this is often called the cover door fold, if you want to make a note of that. So when you do it again, students will recognize cupboard door because it opens like the doors of a cupboard. Nice. Cupboard door. <laughs> so they opened the doors, they came inside and sat down, just like us. <laughs> now, not to be left out, Brother Short, also known as the width of the paper, will get the same invitation. Let's repeat the first two steps, but in the opposite direction. So we're going to take, take the width of our paper and just do another book fold, holding okay. it in half, but width-wise. And Elizabeth, am I going too fast, or this case? No, okay. I think this is terrific. Okay. And when the brothers short received their invitation, they did the same thing. They opened it up. And now you're going to see another vertical line of symmetry. So let's let's trace that or draw that line. And I can just hear some of my students saying we're making perpendicular lines. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I was going to ask you. <laughs> see? For Jumping ahead. Eight, you could write in there perpendicular. Yes. And also, if you look carefully, you'll see more fractions. Because as we fold it now, can you see the paper is divided into from those folds? Yeah, we have eighths now. Eighths, right, you have eighths. We had fourths, but we went over that. So you have right. eighths. <laughs> and it's always good for students to see they struggle a lot of times with fractions. Mm -hmm. Even though the number, the denominator is smaller, the fraction part, right? It's right. Small. Even you know, bottom, you know, eight is usually bigger, but the fraction part, one eight, makes it smaller. So that's yes. That concept. Yeah, that's and a very difficult concept. It is, and they can visually see it, and it's great because it takes it out of the textbook and it puts it into their hands. Mm -hmm. It's a concrete. So we're applying mindfulness now because every time we fold the paper, we're asking students to carefully observe, make observations, and explore each time they fold the paper. Mm -hmm. So they read their invitation and it said in the middle. Did we make another cupboard or fold? Yes. Let's fold the side. Yeah, just put that in there again. Perfect. And we're going to leave it this time. When I'm demonstrating, I'll usually trace the parts I want students to see because although sometimes they hear me, they don't often see the steps. So mm -hmm. This way, if I trace it and I'm demonstrating it, they can get a visual cue. When these brothers arrived at the door or the room, it was locked shut. So they decided to push the door, push <laughs> the door, 
we need to take the outside corner and fold it precisely against that vertical line that guide guide you to the paper. Okay. This is a critical step because some students seem to think I go all the way to the center. But can you see the difference? I'm yeah. just going against the line. And that, what shape does it create there? A triangle. Yes, a triangle. So you'll have a little space underneath the triangle. And they pushed all the sides of the door. So we're going to go around the perimeter of the paper and crease sharply the outside corner against that guideline. So how many triangles will you have? Four triangles. And the paper gets a little thick, so I tell students, take your time and carefully crease that paper. Excellent. A few times. So it should look like this. Perfect. And if you wanted to take time and count the sides, you would discover a very special polygon. <laughs> I'll let you do that on your own, okay? <laughs> you come up with But for the very last step, um, we're ready to discover our model. I usually give students a beginning cue when I'm teaching and an ending cue. So if you look below the triangles you created, do you see a rectangular border? Right yes, here? yes. I'll show you my origami pencil. <laughs> Here's this rectangular border. And the next step, is to take that and gently fold it over the triangles to lock them down in place. Okay. I'll hold it up so you can see. And then repeat that step on the other side. Right below the triangles is a rectangular border. Take that piece of paper and fold it right over the triangles. You see it has a natural bend where it goes naturally and fold it over the triangles to lock them down in place. So after pushing and shoving and heaving their bodies against the door, <laughs> they still couldn't get inside. So just as they were about to give up, folded back the sides of the door. So as quickly as we count to three in Japanese, can you say itchy? Itchy. Knee. Knee. And sun. Sun. Now gently, gently take your hands and the hem, they call it the hem, or sides, you want to gently open the sides of the door and you will discover a treasure box like this one. Excellent. Oh, Great that's thing. wonderful. Ooh. <laughs> and teachers, um, you want to go around uh, the perimeter of the box and I take the corner right here and pinch it to help shape it. Yeah. That'll wear it off. Excellent. And each corner, and another shaping technique is to push the sides toward the center. Mm -hmm. Paper is springy, it'll spring back. Yeah. And again, I would take more time with the students to incorporate mindfulness, and then uh, I would also ask them to come up with different ideas of how they could use the box. And some of you think of ways you might use that in your classroom. Oh, yes. And I think this would be a wonderful thing to do with our students, uh, whether we're face to face or working online, a great little addition to their school desk area to hold their pencils and erasers or crayons. So many different things that they can put inside. It's great for holding objects, but it, it also will generate new ideas, um, you know, to inspire innovation and creativity because I've had students use it as a diorama. Oh, I love it. Or how about drawing their own picture in this space here? Mm-hmm. Draw something here meaningful to them. Or if they're doing a book report, they can put information here. I love it. If, if they're folding a crane. <laughs> a little display case. Yes, a display case <laughs> to um, display your other origami. And Students have come up with all kinds of things. I know in the classroom, uh, we used to play games sometimes on certain days, and they would roll the dice, and they would roll all over the classroom. But when <laughs> I talked to the box, it would stay contained, and it was a great way um, to roll that without... I love it. That, um, this was traditionally known as the magazine box. 
magazine cover so you can take magazines and fold it and I stapled a handle on the side to make a, a basket <laughs> and here's one I like this I found uh, Japanese calligraphy can you see that love it yes and with a handle and then one more <laughs> the best part about this box if you make another one exactly like the other one they connect together and so you're making all kinds of connections very nice a nice uh, gift wrap almost <laughs> you can make so, something for someone so sayonara and may the fold be with you <laughs> Wasn't that pretty cool? I mean, how many ways can you use a box? So many ways. And I love that this can be adaptable for face-to-face -face learning or online learning as well. All you have to do is tilt your computer screen if you're on a laptop and the students can see what you're doing with your hands. So give it a try and let us know what you think in the comments. I can't wait to hear about how you use origami with your students. If you like getting videos like this, then hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to the Inspired Classroom channel so that you will be notified every time we drop a new video for Arts Integration and SEAL. My name is Elizabeth Peterson. Have a great day.